How are you doing today, my friend? Thank you for joining me very much on Postures of Life. Just a little introduction. I know I forget this on my videos, but I think it's important for sure if you don't know me. Um, and thank you if you're a friend and you're tuning in, a friend from my everyday life, of course. You are a friend as well if you're a friend from the internet. I do appreciate you tuning in. My name is Aaron Cesuric. I'm a 200-hour registered yoga teacher. I teach at the Niles Gerard Area Yoga Room. I also teach chair yoga at a senior citizen's home, and I teach yoga for rehabilitation from different substances at a center in in Boardman, Ohio, in Rogers, Ohio. So thank you for joining me here this week on this installment of Postures of Life. This installment is about transitions. As we have done transitions in a past installment, yes, but this transition is moving in the opposite direction. And I also wish to get a little more specific with Thinking about transitions, transitions on the mat, and transitions in our lives. So this particular transitions is transitions high to low. And how I think about this in my life is I'll be high in a sense of joy and peace and just happiness in general for life. Sometimes you're happy. You really don't know why, and that's fine. But then something might come along that might bring you down from that happiness. It might bring you down in a very dramatic way or subtle way over, over time. You know, there's different ways to come down truth. So it could be some bad news about a family member being ill. It could be car troubles. You know, it could be maybe at work you have various assignments that you could be doing like me, and maybe some of those assignments you don't like as opposed to others. So that could be the case. Whatever the case is, I'm here to guide you through a journey as well as myself, a journey on the mat in hopes of translating those lessons into the lessons of life. So. The lessons on the mat are done in a very kind of simplesque, literal way with our physical bodies. So for this transition in our bodies, what we'll be doing basically is, is moving from a standing posture like, we, like I am now and maybe you would like to move into, into a squatting and then a sitting position. So very literal, high too low. So, how we left last week is we were in a pose called Warrior Two. Normally, in my sequence at the rehabilitation center, I have this transition right after the Warrior Two pose. So, I'll go ahead and get into that pose, and then I'll move into the transition. <clears throat> I'll move into the transition from that pose. That might be the best way to demonstrate it. So warrior two pose, if you remember, we have our legs spread apart. One leg is bent, the front leg. The other leg is either pointing at a 90 degree angle or 45 moving forward. We try to align the heel to the mid arc. And then what we do is we spread our arms in either direction, kind of over, over the legs in a straight align as we could possibly do so, parallel with the ground below us. And then I always recommend turning the palms up and then turning them down to help expand the airways. And sometimes we have neck problems, so this might not be right for us today, but if you do not, we turn and we look over that front 
middle finger. And then here I usually have some affirmations to help focus us in the pose. I find strength and clarity as I move beyond my fears. So in this pose, we are, in a sense, elevated in a high way, but also our mind and our energy is very high in the sense that hopefully we have a feeling of confidence, of strength, of I can do itness in this pose, you could say. But then it may be may become tedious to hold this pose, so you may wish to come back down. So placing my hands on my hips, allowing my arms to rest down at my sides, I turn both feet so that they're pointing forward. And now I'll go ahead and move the camera down so you can go ahead and see my feet. Let me move back a little bit. Okay, so you can see most of my body in this way. Very good. All right, and then once we have done this, we kind of just fold forward a little bit, trying to maintain a nice straight back. Maybe breath will help us here to relax into this position. Then when we are ready, we can go ahead and let the arms relax down, just hanging loosely maybe. And then we can bend the knees, kind of coming down into a squat. And then maybe pressing our hands on the ground. And then gradually maybe moving our feet towards each other. Coming to a fuller squat. Maybe arms reach behind us. We just simply come into any seated position that would feel comfortable for us at this time. Trying to return to a nice straight spine, alert, but also very grounded, grounded at ease with the feeling of this deep connection with the earth below us. Maybe we observe gravity as it's helping, helping us, aiding us in this, this journey of deeper connection with the earth below us, this feeling of safety and security, if there wasn't gravity, we would float away, unless, of course, we were tethered. But that would be a very strange thing indeed, a very strange thing indeed. We had to live our lives in very little to no gravity. So I invite you to be thankful for gravity, be thankful for the forces, of the earth around you and the earth below you. Easy breath in, easy breath out. So here you might take time to just reflect briefly on the transition, how you are feeling as you are high, as you are elevated in that standing posture, and then how you are feeling now. For me, I enjoy both I enjoy both states, but there is a way to enjoy enjoy the whole journey rather than rather than feeling one is better than the other. Though sometimes we have natural natural inclinations, likes and dislikes for various reasons. Maybe it's, maybe it's built into our DNA. Maybe it's very much beyond our ability to understand here in, in, this, in this life. Maybe, maybe it's just something that we say is as it is. But I do find there is something in every experience that I can enjoy. And I find when I do that, 
that I am actually alleviating my suffering, my need for things to be a certain way, and that feeling that can sometimes manifest into physical pain if things do not turn out the way that I would like them to. I have experienced this in, in insomnia and in heart palpitations, a sense of kind of dizziness almost, as I become so very upset because the thing that I was hoping to happen did not happen. What I wanted just didn't come about. So with yoga, with time and patience, learning about transitioning and accepting the process, the journey, I actually can enjoy much more of life in its entirety. And I invite you to do the same, do the same in your own journey. Help yourself alleviate your own suffering. Just accepting the state as it is, whatever it is, whether it's maybe a favorite activity, like for me, I do enjoy certain video games. I also enjoy certain TV programs. I enjoy relaxing in yoga. I enjoy quiet. There are a lot of things that I have a kind of a star by my favorites. If they were a, a web page, they would be my favorite page. The the quiet page or or whatever it would be, whether it be a, a certain snack food perhaps. And then I have things that I would never visit if they were a web page, like noisiness and chaos, like stalking pharmacy. So many little little things in pharmacy and it takes a long time to to work through them all and to put them all in the, the right places, and we don't always have enough time to do it in the time that I am in working on my job. So there are a lot of things, long story short, that I like and that I dislike, and learning to live with the, different, the differences and accept them and enjoy them. For instance, pharmacy, stocking pharmacy. It's kind of a puzzle of the mind, and it does give you a real a great sense of accomplishment when you do well, even if you don't accomplish the whole task. You, know, you can say that I did my best and that I kept going. And you can take some personal pride in it, the, the good kind, the kind that builds confidence and stability and groundedness in who you are. And maybe if it's loud noise and, and chaos, well, I can say that I'm experiencing life in a very kind of raw sense and I'm witnessing something very, very powerful. And I'm given an opportunity to experience the life, the life beyond what I expect it to be. So there's many lessons of patience, of acceptance, and other things in that state. So it is, it is with this. I'll go ahead and and leave the um, the journeying, the further journeying, up to you. I would recommend that you you give it a try. Give it a try to think about transitions and how you're feeling in state to state and opening your mind up to accepting all the states as they are, knowing that there are some things in all states that you're going to like and dislike, and this is a matter of just who you are. And accepting that, too, is a very powerful activity. It can bring you greater peace, peace within. So thank you so much, my friend, for being here today for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you very much, very much. And God bless you. And namaste, namaste. A word that means my inner light honors your inner light. And I invite you back again, 
back again next week when I will when I will give another another little experience that will hopefully benefit you as I hope this one has as well. It will hopefully open you up to life and and loving life and the different possibilities before you. So for those that are interested, I'll go ahead and give a review of all the other postures that I have that I have shown through this Postures of Life series. So thank you. Thank you if you are if you are going your way right now. I hope you have a wonderful day. And thank you if you are staying with me for this little this little uh, sequence, this little summary of things that that were, and of course will be, once again, right? Okay, great. So now let us begin. So the first, the first posture that I would like to review is Balasana. So from a seated position, or maybe you are in all fours already, we'll go ahead and and come to all fours, sometimes known as tabletop position. I'll go ahead and, and move the camera down a bit so you can see me a little better. And once in this all fours position, we'll go ahead and allow the toes to touch in the back, the knees maybe to be spread a little bit wider than they normally would be, and then to just recline back onto our heels, bottom meeting heels, and then either reach the arms forward or bring them beside the body, whichever is most comfortable for us to do. And then here I like to introduce, offer the affirmation, I rest and trust in patience. I rest and trust in patience. I rest and trust in patience. Very good. And when you're ready to do so, coming back up to that all fours position, from here moving into a little vinyasa, a little sequence of poses known as Cat or cow, marje asana, and fiddle asana. So first we will move into cow by taking a breath in. Looking forward, we might feel our back become concave slightly, our pelvis tilt down in the front. And then exhaling, back arches up, pelvis moves in the opposite way. And then continuing in this fashion, breathing in, moving into cow, exhaling, Moving down into cat, looking down as many times as we would like. And when we're done, returning to a neutral tabletop position, nice flat back, and then moving into side, child's pose, parsva, balasana. So taking the right hand and then scooping it under the torso, moving us in the left direction with our gaze, resting the right ear on the ground. Easy breath in, easy breath out. And when we're ready, coming back to tabletop, all fours, and then just moving to the opposite side. So the right side, reaching that left arm under the torso. Easy breath in, easy breath out. Very good. And when we're ready, returning to that neutral tabletop position. And from here, we'll just find our bottom, however is easiest for us to do so. Another transition, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, in this posture, we will be moving into some folds and some twists, so bending that left leg, bringing that sole in your right thigh, breathing the arms up, framing the head, then exhaling, twisting to the left, arms come down, right hand left knee, left arm behind us, easy breath in, easy breath out, I leave my past behind me, I leave my past behind me, I leave my past behind me, 
Very good. And then returning forward, breathing the arms up once again. Then exhaling, folding over that outstretched foot as much as we are able to do. Easy breath in, easy breath out. I move into the present. I move into the present. I move into the present. Very good. And then coming up to a nice straight back. We'll go ahead and straighten the left leg out before us. And then we'll go ahead and bend that right leg, bringing that sole into the inner left thigh, breathing the arms up. Then exhaling, folding over that outstretched leg. I kind of did the opposite first. My apologies. But we can just do the twist. We can do the twist after this. Moving into the present. Moving into the present. I move into the present. Very good. So now for that twist. So breathing the arms up. And then exhaling, twisting to the right. Left hand, right knee, right arm behind me. I leave my past behind me. I leave my past behind me. I leave my past behind me. Very good. Allowing both legs to come straight before us as we look forward, moving into a full forward fold. So breathing in, arms come up, and exhaling, hinging at the hips, nice straight back as we fold over the outstretched legs. Easy breath in. Easy breath out. I move into the present with patience. I move into the present with patience. I move into the present with patience. Very good. And then coming up to a nice straight back and drawing the toes in toward the groin as we bend each leg. And if we would like to deepen the pose, butterfly pose, we can push our bottom forward a little bit as our arms are behind us, and then bring them back around. Maybe to grasp those toes if this does feel comfortable and good for us. Easy breath in, easy breath out. My soul is as gentle as a butterfly. My soul is as gentle as a butterfly. My soul is as gentle as a butterfly. Very good. And when we're ready to do so, go ahead and allow the legs back up. Push the knees together, soles of the feet on the mat. Here's our first transition, low to high, pushing the bottom up slightly, pushing forward, pushing up a little more into a squat and looking down as we raise our bottom. First, and transitioning upward, vertebrae by vertebrae, nice and gentle here, preventing lightheadedness, at least I hope. And then once we're here, we might rock back and forth on our feet. And then eventually coming to stillness. For me, this helps me feel balance over the arches of my feet, which I find is the most beneficial spot for me to keep my weight as if I concentrate my weight on either my toes or my heels, it can cause foot pain. Quite literally, I've experienced this in work quite often as I'm often on a hard cement flat floor, not very forgiving for the feet. So let us move into the standing postures now. I'll go ahead and show you my feet first, and then I'll go ahead and move the camera up to demonstrate how my upper body looks. So firstly, taking one foot to the short edge of the mat, pointing forward with that foot, then bringing the other leg backward just slightly. Let me see if I can scoop back so you can see my feet a little better. And then that back foot's either at 90 degrees or you can move it 45, moving forward. Okay, and then we'll try to align the arch with our heel. And I just thought that 
maybe it might be nice to show it on the side as well. So I'll take a little bit of time to do that. So in the standing and then the front foot points forward, the back foot extends a little bit, and we move back a little more. So the foot, the back foot can be 90 degrees. And we'll try to align it with the arch, the arch to heel of the front foot. And then bending the knee, trying to maintain that the knee is directly over that ankle so we don't we don't injure that joint at all that can be very bad as our ankle or i mean our knee is something we utilize all the time so that's one reason why learning how to treat our knee in this position can actually be beneficial in many other positions and then putting the hands to the hips, turning the right hip back slightly, left hip forward slightly. We'll bring the arms up, inhaling them up, similar to how when we were in a twisting posture. And this is full warrior one. I offer the affirmation, my soul is as, <laughs> my soul is as gentle. No, no, I find strength and clarity as I move beyond my fears. I find strength and clarity as I move beyond my fears. Very good, allowing the arms to come back down to the sides, hands to hips. We'll just go ahead and transition to warrior two, turning in a direction that our hips are open. Then the arms come straight over the legs, about shoulder level, trying to Woo, it's kind of weird looking at yourself in the camera, but this feels right. Okay, and maybe turning the hands up, turning them down to help expand the airways, maybe gazing over that front middle finger of our hand if we feel at ease in doing so. Easy breath in, easy breath out. I find strength and clarity as I move beyond my fears. I find strength and clarity as I move beyond my fears. Very good. And allowing the hands back to the hips. And then just transitioning to the other side. So the right hip now, or the right foot now, pointing 90 degrees or 45 degrees forward. And the heel of the left foot aligning with the mid arch of that right foot, knee bent on the left leg, directly above the ankle, and then maybe turning the uh, left hip back and the right hip forward slightly, and breathing the arms up, framing the head into full warrior one position, easy breath in, easy breath out. I haven't turned the camera up because I guess this is probably probably enough of my body to understand what's going on. Although I realize it looks a little strange without my head, but maybe maybe it's amusing to you. That's nice to laugh. It's nice to laugh, isn't it? Easy breath in, easy breath out. I find strength and clarity. I mean, it's amusing to me. <laughs> It really is. <laughs> easy breath in, easy breath out. When you're ready to do so, turning out into warrior two in the direction your hips are opening, arms come down straight before and behind over those legs and parallel with the ground below you as much as possible. And then maybe turning palms up, turning them down, gazing over the front and middle finger if you'd like to do so. Easy breath in, easy breath out. I find strength and clarity as I move beyond my fears. I find strength and clarity as I move beyond my fears. Very good. And relaxing the hands down to the hips. Straightening 
the left leg, pointing both toes forward in the direction your hips are opening. And then transitioning, transitioning high to low. So folding forward, trying to maintain a nice straight back about halfway. And then when we reach that, start to bend those knees, start to drop the arms, allow them to hang nicely and relax. And then press the palms on the earth, feeling that connection. And then maybe bringing the feet together, coming to that squat, and then coming to a nice seated position. Whatever feels good for you, your body at this time. Taking a nice breath in, nice breath out. And we'll go ahead and close for today. Thank you so much, my body, for carrying me through this practice. Thank you, ground, for supporting me. Thank you, Vital Breath, for uniting all living beings, for giving me this opportunity to live and to love, to learn about harmony and happiness, connectedness with others. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you for participating today in a practice of health and happiness. May it shower you with the blessings that can come when we learn to be more attentive in our lives, when we learn to be more aware of what is truly happening in the present circumstances rather than what we think is happening because an emotion might be pulling us into some kind of drama about this or that, not having this, wanting that, you know, not something not going our way. May we always see the light, the light of truth before us in every moment. That is the secret to health, to happiness, to togetherness with others, to love and to live in the fullest sense of the word. Thank you so much once again. Have a wonderful day, a wonderful week, and I hope to see you again, to see you again next week, to see you again soon, my friends. Have a lovely day. Namaste.